very brief rant. Go! So, in the lead-in to the upcoming Avengers movie, Infinity War, we've been drip-fed a lot of elements about the story and elements within those movies, in particular the villain, Thanos, supposedly one of the most powerful and commanding people within the entire universe, according to Guardians of the Galaxy. So naturally, a lot of people are getting very excited to seeing this very infamous and powerful comic book villain portrayed on the big screen. And while admittedly I'm no exception to this, there is one thing that I've noticed in re-watching a lot of the Marvel movies again about his actions within them. In that, he's a fucking idiot. Think about how many times Thanos had the opportunity to do things perfectly by using either people under his own command or even just doing them himself, and yet it's completely backfired right in his face. Now to be fair, I'm not complaining about the fact that, well if he is so powerful, why doesn't he just do everything himself? That is, if you have the opportunity of power, you would just mostly do things in the background. Though it must be boring just sitting around watching people do stuff for you. I think he even admits that in the movie at one point. But at the same time, the decisions that he's chosen to make in relation to trying to acquire all six Infinity Stones has not exactly been particularly clever. The first time he ever made any direct influence within the story of the cinematic universe was when he had Loki try and retrieve the Space Stone for him. Now, he provided Loki with an army, which is understandable. He's going up against Earth, and Thanos is clearly not as stupid to underestimate Earth just because they happen to be underdeveloped. But he also gives Loki a weapon, which, if you didn't know already, is actually the Mind Infinity Stone. And what does Loki do? He bloody loses it! So basically, Thanos already had one of the Infinity Stones, and then he was all like, yeah, go ahead, complete stranger who's well known for being a lying, deceiving asshole. Go down to Earth and get the next Infinity Stone for me. You seem completely trustworthy. Why the hell would you do that? That's like trying to hunt down all the cool cars in the world, then giving away one of those cars to a known carjacker to try and find another one for you. Doesn't exactly sound particularly clever, does it? Now, admittedly, Loki is supposed to be the master of persuasion, so he could have easily been able to convince Thanos, but at the same time, his servants seem to be rather on the fence about the whole thing, and continually doubting if Loki could actually do it. So even with that, Thanos still gave away his most prized possession to a person who he'd only just met and had no prior knowledge of whether he could actually do the job he was setting him to do, and then just sat back and watched as he lost as the only Infinity Stone he'd ever acquired. And then what does he do after he finds about all this? He smiles as if it's all going according to plan. <laughs> I just gave away one of the most powerful artifacts in the universe to an adorable demigod, and he completely and utterly lost it, and I have no idea how to get it back or where to get the other stones from. <laughs> Maybe this is why chicks don't dig me as much. The next time he actually does anything is in Guardians of the Galaxy, where he hires Ronin to once again go out and find an Infinity Stone for him, this time the Power Stone. Now to be fair, I can understand hiring Ronin because he's got more of a reputation, and he's clearly dealt with Purple Murples here before, but at the same time, he clearly had no faith in him really from the get-go, describing him as a child and saying that he would barely be able to do it on his own, hence why he gave his two daughters to him. And yet, even then, he still entrusted him with retrieving, again, one of the most powerful artifacts in the universe that several people are hunting for. Though, at the same time, he seems to have learnt his lesson on not giving away really valuable weapons that he's been hunting for to people who may lose them. But then, when Rodan himself realises that it's an Infinity Stone, he's clever enough to realise that if he has one, he naturally has no need for Thanos. And then what does Thanos do after receiving a death threat from the incredibly powerful Ronin now? Absolutely nothing. Again, he just sits in his chair, and even though it was proven that even with the Infinity Stone, Ronin wasn't actually invincible, Thanos doesn't do shit. The last time we see him is when Ronin's talking to him on his weird FaceTime app that looks like it's made out of one of those pin art things, and that's it. All he does is just kick back and relax. Not much of a sense of urgency, have you, Thanos? Well, I would go try and beat him myself, but I've got more helpless children. I need to go turn into cyborgs, or something. And then finally, we see him at the end of Avengers 2, where, despite the fact it's probably been a few months since Ronan failed to retrieve the stone for him, he gets the Infinity Gauntlet out of the Asgardian Armory, which he can apparently just walk into, and yet doesn't try taking any other weapons whilst he's there, and simply says, Fine. I guess I'll do it myself. 
Okay, ignoring the fact that he can still have other people do stuff for him, but if he wants to do things now, then that's fine. But if he does want to do things himself now, why didn't he do it earlier? Is that chair really, really that comfortable? So let's have a look at how things could have gone now, shall we? Number one, he sends down someone to Earth who he actually trusts to get the Tesseract. He just grabs it out of the S.H.I.E.L.D. archive, which was proved from the Avengers apparently you could just teleport into, so boom, problem solved, and then brings it straight back to Thanos without any Nambi Pambi world domination side quests. And then there, that's two in the hand already. The Power Stone and the Mind Stone that he didn't just absent-mindedly give away to a complete stranger. So there, that's two right there. Number two, he actually detects the ether's energy signal, which, really, how could you not with all of those weird aperture portals popping up all over the Nine Realms, then tracks it down to the Collector's Workshop, breaks in, just takes it, and then makes Crispy Howl the Duck as a celebratory feast. That's three. And then number three, again, just sends down someone to Morag who he actually trusts to collect the orb, and then just brings it back to him straight away. That's all four collected right there, and without intervention from two green maniacs, the guy who's in every movie ever now, a wise-cracking New York-accented raccoon, and a walking, talking tree. So all four would be in his possession, and only two left to get, assuming he hasn't already found them. Besides of which, things are even more difficult now since the Mind Stone um, more spoilers by the way, is in the body of the Vision, who is worthy of lifting Thor's hammer. So if you do take situation into your own hands again, you'll have to contend with two people who are capable of lifting a hammer that is heavy enough to deliver blows of the equivalent of one million tons of iron. And yet that didn't give Loki a chest cavity or break the glass table he put it on. Go figure. And besides of which, why don't you just send down some of your own forces to get the Scepter back? It's only being guarded by Hydra, which at the end of Captain America 2 showed only had enough resources to barely keep itself afloat as it was. You could have just sent down either Nebula or Gamora to get the stone back and then blow the place to high heaven just to make a statement. But no! Now it's in the head of some sort of robot with the voice of the writer from A Knight's Tale. Good luck trying to get that one back now, moron. I just hope that when it comes to the actual movies down the line, Thanos does actually end up being a very smart and threatening villain. But so far, he's not proved himself as being particularly competent. Then again, with the exception of a few, none of the Marvel villains really do. I'm looking at you, Baron Strucker.